Hello, this is Tom Pizzuti with Trading with Mark, and it is Wednesday, September the 20th, the FOMC rate decision day. So let's see what the S&P has in store for us today. Just for some context, I think it's worth kind of taking a look at where we are in the overall picture. And I think there's a reasonable chance that a lower high has already been set against the uh, highs from late 20, uh, 2022. The that we don't know that for a fact yet. That uh, this will only be confirmed that th that this is more than a correction once underneath 41.93. But I'll give you a reason why I think that the the move could definitely be at least down to here, if not more, um, on the next slide. But for right now, uh, also draw attention to that the current week is we have a kind of a doji candle building here, and it's underneath 44.72, and being underneath 44.72, I would take as a minor negative. Uh, looking for that to extend lower, but you know, too difficult to say for now with any certainty at, at this level. Uh, right now, all we know is that we've had a, a respectable decline into um, kind of a moderate support, kind of a choppy bounce, and then kind of slipping back underneath the initial support value. And uh, we'll have to see what happens the rest of this week and next week before we can determine whether we have a shot at, you know, pushing past the uh, July high into a minor new high to still set a lower high to back in 2022, or if by some kind of miracle, uh, the market goes ahead and advances into a new high. I wouldn't say that new highs are impossible, but I think un unlikely considering uh, the situation we're in. I think more likely that we at least fall back to 41.93. And even then, I really think that we'll fall, have weakness uh, through the end of the year. But we should at least get to here and then the market kind of decide how much bounce they can get up off of that or if this in turn fails and that they fall lower. But let me move on and I'll show you why I think that it's probably prudent to let the bears have a chance here. This is the S&P 500 percentage is below the 20 day moving average. So this is the number, the percentage of components uh, underneath the 20 day moving average. And highs in this uh, mean that you have uh, price lows in the S&P. Lows mean we have highs in the s and uh, s p so this is inverse uh, to prices. And what I find interesting about this chart is this cycle that has been pretty steady for about a year here. And the cycle's on a low right now um, and looking to turn up um, through the end of October. And that would mean that bears have a shot to drive S&P 500 prices lower uh, certainly for the next month, if not a little bit over that month and a half. And uh, so I want to give give bears a chance to get somewhere. And that, you, that really equates to um, any kind of retraces or probably an opportunity to sell. So keep, with that in mind, advancing to an intraday chart here we'll see that the off of the July high, we saw a channel start to form in the bottom fall out of the channel. I'm calling that the first move down off of, off of a B wave high. That was followed with a three wave ad advance, a three wave bounce. Three waves are corrective. 
So this is would be this is exactly what was uh, expected after an impulse down is a three wave bounce. This would happen to be at a 75% retrace and then had a move back down from from that. We'll call that a, a, a lower degree one. Followed by another three wave, hence corrective bounce um, up into towards the end of last week, um, Thursday. Then on Friday, had a uh, gap down and that move down has has had a continuation into um, Tuesday morning uh, of this week. And uh, at, that was followed with a kind of a, a bounce um, through the rest, through the, into the afternoon. And the market position that I think that we're in right now is that this move, this drop from Thursday needs to be corrected. And that, that this move up that took place on Tuesday was only the first wave of the correction. Again, it should be three waves, just like all these other ones of other degrees. So this was three waves. This one here was three waves. We should three, see three wave, a three wave bounce up off of this low. And unfortunately though, is that a B wave, the, the in-between wave, the second swing in um, this corrective move, doesn't necessarily have to be a higher low. It could be a lower low. Um, both are valid options. So therefore, I can't say for a fact that, well, if we drop underneath, say, 4425, then the wave count is invalidated and something else is going on. No, it could be could very well be that we just end up with a, a B wave low. And that target range, if we do, if the higher low fails, again, if we have a higher low, kind of looking at 44.29 to 44.25, and if that was to fail, start shopping for a low around 44.08 to 44.04. Then looks for some kind of kind of sharp rally, either off of the higher low or off of the, off of the minor new low. And that, that move up, my guess is probably going to happen on the FOMC announcement itself, which takes, takes place at uh, 1400 Eastern Daylight. And another thing to note on FOMC days is that you can see three moves take place. One happens on the FOMC announcement itself. Another one could happen at the start of the press conference, even though I think that's ridiculous because the they don't say he's all Powell does is read what was the in the announcement when he first starts the press conference. But nonetheless, you can see a reaction at 1430. But more importantly, is the Q&A session that starts about 10 minutes later. So approximately at 1440. When the Q&A starts, you could see an, another move take place. Uh, definitely something to see that, let's say if we were to see a move down in a B wave in the morning on Wednesday, uh, that starts to stabilize, starts to kind of get a bounce. As soon as you get these FOMC, both the announcement itself and also at 1430, you can see some kind of test of the ranges. So the, it could go back and forth a couple times in that, uh, just uh, uh, probing the range of the day so far before it sort of sets the direction for the rest of the day, sort of the real move. So you can kind of get these kind of fake out moves or you know probing the edges before the next trend starts. And uh, so be aware of that if you're trade if you're trading during the announcement itself. Again, I think this bounce probably takes place on the uh, during this uh, after the statement. Um, but you know, if things are going to go wrong, they go wrong in the Q and A session usually. Uh, if you're going to get some kind of fake out move and some kind of 
a major reversal taking place often happens after some kind of question gets answered that is, say, a counter to how the statement kind of sounds uh, it itself. But anyway, de definitely take care. It's going to be, should be an interesting day um, with a fair amount of volatility. All these numbers could be end up being tested tomorrow. That's just the way things go on an FOMC day. And uh, good luck and uh, talk to you again soon.